going on, everyone? I can't spin a ball on my finger. <laughs> Let's vibe code some Figma design system components. We're going to look at setting up our Figma MCP server, building out our design tokens via AI, and generating some initial design system components. I also want to give a big shout out to my friend Amir, who taught me a lot about Cursor. I'm going to link his channel down below, but let's say hi to Amir. What's up, UI Collective? I'm Amir MXC, Kirk's friend and resident AI Cursor expert. Kirk is going to link my channel down below. See you. Thanks, Amir. Let's dive in. And if you're a big fan of what we're doing at UI Collective, consider supporting UI Collective Academy. You get access to a ton of courses, micro lessons, a bunch of perks and downloads. We even have two Chrome plugins coming out soon. We actually even have a course on becoming an AI designer. I do know of a couple of designers who got hired for the next design role based on what they learned in this course alone. Okay. So again, all support really goes a long way. And thanks for being here. So here we are within Cursor. Now we're using Cursor for this example, but there's other AI tools that you can use this ultimately for, okay? We're just using Cursor because that's what gets the people going these days. It's the one that everyone seems to be using. So now I need to connect Cursor to Figma. And this is where the MCP comes in handy, okay? Now, again, if you're not familiar with Cursor, it's essentially like an AI development tool, more so for developers than designers. But again, what I am seeing a lot of now is a lot of design roles with an expectation that you know do know how to use Cursor, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go to settings and to at the top here. And then we have to come down here to tools and MCP. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to use Figma's MCP so that Cursor and MC and Figma can start to talk to each other. So what we will be able to do is be able to pull in our Figma design system components, our Figma designs into Cursor, and even also our design tokens or Figma variables as well. Okay, so I'm going to put this link down below. And essentially, it is all the different MCP tools that Figma can connect to or AI tools that Figma's MCP can connect to. Sorry. So whether it's VS Code, Curse that we're going to be using today, Claude Code, Claude Windsurf Replit, so on and so forth. Again, there's a million and two AI tools out there now, but we're going to be using uh, Cursor. So we're going to add MCP to Cursor. Now, again, I'm going to put this link down below so you don't need to find it. One thing I would like to call out is I have experienced some issues if I was logged into multiple Figma accounts. Um, so on the desktop, try to only be logged into sort of your main Figma account just to avoid any issues. So when I hit add MCP to cursor, it's actually going to open up cursor. And let's flip to that right now. So when I hit that button, what it did is it opened cursor and it's showing this right now, where essentially install the MCP server. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to hit install. And then one thing we also need to do, so I can see the servers installed, but now we need to actually connect it. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this. And what it's actually going to ask me to do is actually open this in an external website. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. So then I land on a page like this where I'm essentially saying, yeah, yes, I'm going to agree and allow access to the Cursor MCP client. What this is going to do is basically authorizing that, yes, Cursor via MCP can access our Figma account because we set up our Figma MCP connection, but we need to authenticate it with a specific account. And that's essentially what we're doing right here. So I went ahead and authorized it. Now, as you can see, when we come back into cursor, I can see that Figma is connected. So it's connected with the MCP server and now is also authenticated to the Figma account that we're going to be using to pull our designs or design system components into cursor in order to actually to develop those out. Now, before we dive in to actually vibe coding our design system or designs, there's one thing that I want to cover here. Now, if you've watched our AI design class on our academy, like many of you have, you're probably familiar with the idea of like prepping AI with a PRD, okay? Now, for this, we're not going to provide a PRD because we're not building a full application. But in order for AI to generate the best components, it's going to need to have an understanding of our variables or our design tokens. Because if all of a sudden you ask it to build components, but you haven't prepped it with variables and an understanding of your variables things are going to go astray and you're not going to have the best results long term. Even too, we can extend this concept a little bit farther, where in order to produce uh, full designs, it's going to need to have an understanding of your components and an understanding of your variables. Otherwise, the designs might not be using the right components and might not be using the right variables. And the worst thing you want to have to do is have to go upwards, where you have developed or vibe coded designs and have to go to components or variables. So it's the idea of almost like feeding AI with the necessary information step by step by step by step. So it has the necessary context it needs in order to actually build things right the very first time. Now, we're not going to focus on designs today. It's going to come in a future video, so be sure to subscribe for that. What I want to focus on now, okay, 
is our variables. Before we move in to some of the components and building those out or vibe coding those components using the variables that we set. Okay, so here we are within our collective kit. Again, this is just one of, the, one of our, like our design system that's associated with our academy. Um, again, it's our design kit more or less. We got a ton of great components. Uh, there's some templates too, but just a real emphasis on componentry and tokens more than anything else. Uh, so we have all our design tokens here. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually import these into cursor. Now, if we go into our variables here, do to do to do, do, where you can see that we have all of our different variables. So we have our brand variables, we have our alias variables, uh, our map to variables. Uh, we also have a response of tokens as well, and even gradients and opacity. Now it's these that I actually want to bring into cursor. Now, if you're not familiar with the brand alias mapped collection, okay, I'm going to leave a link down below. This is the same formula, I guess, that we use whenever we're working with design system clients on building out design systems. Okay. So again, we do this for a living. We build design systems for a living. If you need help with your design system, again, you can find this down below. Okay. So again, I'll put a link where you can build the same structure, uh, but we want to bring these variables into cursor and train the AI on the variables first before we go ahead and actually build out those components. Okay, so let's go back to cursor now and let's open a new project. Now I'm not going to hit this button together because when I open this button, it's going to show you my mess of files. I don't want you to see that. But essentially when you hit open project, it's going to ask you to select a folder uh, in order to put this file into. So there you can just hit new folder, just call it UI collective demo or whatever you want to call it. And then it's going to open up the cursor instance. Okay, so we're going to flip to that part so you don't see my messy file structure. Okay, so here we are within cursor. Again, after you just created that folder and selected the folder, it's going to open up in something like this where I see my folder name at the top left here, okay? So here's essentially where all the code is going to be. Now we have our chat here on the right-hand side. Now for this, because we already have our Figma, connect, Figma account connected to Cursor via the MCP. So now thinking back to what I said before, we need to prep the AI with the necessary context. Let's do that to start. So please study the Figma variable structure, variable structure, if I can type, inside the following Figma file. Please pay attention to the connection point between uh, collections, variable collections, particularly, or particularly, if I spelled that right, uh, the connection between the brand alias in mapped collection. Now, this is really important, is I'm actually going to ask it to generate a summary in a markdown file of the tokens. I want to make sure that AI understands what's going on. Please generate a summary of the design token structure in a markdown file. And I'm going to paste in that Figma link. Okay, with me so far, we're going to send that. So as you can see here now, now exactly what it's doing is it's actually going through and, you know, studying the Figma variables. You can see even took a screenshot of our variables and is basically just doing an analysis on all the different variables themselves. So now that that's ran, okay, let's just keep all this, is now look what it actually did. Is it generated a full file, full markdown file, of all the tokens, summarizing it, you know, it gave you a specific purpose of the alias collection without me needing it to. So alias tokens provide an abstraction layer that gives meaning to raw brand values without being tied to specific use cases. And it gives you all the different variables here and everything of the sorts. Okay, so if we had more time, I would read through this with everyone and we go through it together to make sure that it fully grasped everything as intended. But for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to assume that it did a relatively good job. And even just some browsing, it looked pretty good from bait based off of what it analyzed. Now, if I did need to make changes to this, where maybe it didn't fully understand something, I could actually edit this markdown file and then tell it the changes that you made and ask it to reanalyze the markdown file. Um, but we're gonna skip through that 
part for now. But again, if you did need to make changes and you needed AI to study those changes, that's how you would go about and do that. So now that our markdown file is generated, what I actually want to have it to do now is actually build out the actual design tokens associated with our Figma variable structure. Now we're actually going to be building like some React components. So before we get into the components themselves, one thing I want to do, as I mentioned, is I want the, it to build out actually the styles that we're going to be using. So again, I'm going to prep it for context. So uh, we are going to be building React components that we will import from Figma later on. Before doing that, um, I want to ensure that the design tokens are built correctly. Based on your current knowledge of our design token, slash Figma variable structure proceed to build out the design tokens, but do not yet build any components. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we are therefore going to send that. So now you can see it's actually going ahead and building everything out based on the variable structure that we have inside of our Figma and based on the context that it therefore has in the markdown file. So now you can see here, we have our tokens. We have our alias collection. We have our brand collection. And we also have our mapped collection. Look at that, okay? And you can even see inside of our mapped collection here, we have all of our different variables. Now, one thing that's really important to note is if you ask, didn't ask it to sort of provide that markdown file, what generally happens and what I see all the time, okay, we're just going to uh, keep all, there we go, is notice how inside of our tokens here, these are at, inside of our mapped collection, these are connecting back to our alias. That is the structure that we should be following and building out design systems. And the reason why cursor or AI was able to recognize that we needed that connection back to our alias and therefore back to our brand is because we asked it to study the variables. We asked it to generate a markdown file summarizing our variable collection. Now, what often happens if you don't do that is it actually just puts a raw hex code here. And if there's ever a raw hex code here, all of a sudden there's no, there's therefore not the connection back to your alias collection and not the collection back to your brand collection which is essentially meaning if there isn't that, that you did all that work in setting up your design system correctly in, in Figma for no reason, because your code would not be following it then. So it's really important when you're building out your token structure inside a cursor or any AI tool that you do see this connection back to the other collections that you would have inside of your Figma file. Okay, so here we are just back within Figma. We're gonna go into uh, our buttons, wherever they are here, do, 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 do. Goodness, I don't even know where buttons are in my own design system. Anyways, okay. So what I did here, essentially, so we have already all of our buttons and we have our button icons, but this would take a little bit too long to generate in terms of the context of this, this tutorial. So I actually don't want to call this button group. I'm just going to call it button uh, demo. And essentially what I did is I simplified it to just sort of these variables or just this initial set of buttons, okay? So we have uh, a default, we have a default hover, we have a default focus and we have a disabled and we have the same for a subtle button, an outline button, and also a transparent button. So what I'm going to do, I am going to copy the link to this selection and then open back up cursor. Okay, so now that we have that initial, like our tokens done, we have like the components that we want to build to start. Now let's go ahead and actually build these out. Okay, so again, I'm going to offer this some context. So now let's proceed. Now that we have a good understanding of the design token architecture, token architecture. Let's now proceed to build some initial design system components. Um, we are going to build them in React. And I want to be able to test those components as we build them out. As we build them out, uh, we are going to start some buttons found inside this Figma link. Okay, so 
really then just paste it in. So just giving it initial instruction as to what we're going to do. So now that we have a good understanding of design token architecture, let's now proceed to build some initial design system components. We're going to build them in React. I want to be able to test those components as we build them out. We're going to start with, with some buttons found inside the Figma link and just proceed forward. So we're just going to go ahead and send that. We're going to see what it comes back with. And again, it might come back with other things that we might need to adjust, uh, but we're going to deal with that as we go, part of just working with AI. And as you can see, it's generating all the code, it's generating everything out, da 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 so it's still going here. Now, one thing I would like to call out is the process that we have gone through thus far, you can refine it. You can refine the tokens with different prompts, tell it to build it out in different structures and CSS or whatever it is that you want to generate that out in. Now, we're going to dive into some of those examples and how we might do that in future videos. But for the purpose of this exercise, this is over what we're proceeding with for now. But I do know that, again, we might want to generate that out in CSS or other types of uh, formatting as well. Now, okay, so remember when I said we're going to set this up in React? So basically what it did here is it set up the project for me. It has everything created, but we do need to install some dependencies. If you're not too sure what this is, maybe take like an intro to dev course or just Google what dependencies are, but essentially we need to install some things inside of that in order to properly run it. Again, I'm not gonna go into this too in depth uh, right now. So we're gonna hit NPM, uh, NPM install. And then we're going to need to hit the dev server. So again, what I did, I just came to terminal, hit new terminal. Again, you might not be able to see it. I don't think you're going to be able to see it if I look at my video. But anyways, at the top bar, I'm on a Mac. You're going to see like, at like the Mac level, you're going to see like a selection called terminal, hit terminal, and then select new terminal. We're going to hit NPM install and then NPM run dev. And then what is going to have happen is going to install the necessary dependencies that we need and then actually uh, render them at this local host. So this is essentially a URL that's ran locally on your computer, where it allows you to go through and actually test things out without publishing it to a domain. Okay, so we're not going to run these dependencies right now, do those uh, on your own, but let's proceed forward. And we'll skip that and just hit this local host URL to see what it came out with. So skipping ahead here, this is what it came out with. So it actually went through and generated some design system components for us. Now, it gave us this design token previews. This doesn't necessarily look right. So I could, again, dialogue with Cursor, say, hey, remove that. But if you look at our components here, so you'll see we have our button components. Again, just our initial button components. So essentially all the variants that we had inside uh, of Figma, that initial grouping. But then down here below, sorry, let me move this up, is we have our interactive components. So I know it might be difficult to see where it's a little bit more noticeable on that one. We'll see how now this is interactive where it's actually hovering because it read the different names and made some assumptions relating to that. So look, this is hovering. This is hovering too. It gets a little bit darker. This is also hovering. And notice how it brings in that nice hover effect with it. Now, I do notice a couple of things here that it didn't properly pull in some of the hover effects associated with it because on our components, the, all our hover effects should have sort of this outer glow almost that's on this transparent button so that's where i would actually need to go back and dialogue with cursor and say hey look we need to fix these and this is what it is but anyways more on that in a future video but even if i was to hit like one of these buttons here if i was to hit click look what happens i can see it says button is clicked and if you look really closely you can see it also brings in that focus state associated with it okay so in just under 20 minutes, we were able to actually vibe code our first design system components. This is great. If you're going into an interview, you want to demo some examples to developers, you want to take initiative, you're really pushing for that promotion inside of your design role. Woo! If you want to watch the video, it's taking the world by storm, click right there. And if you want to watch a video, I highly recommend it. Click right there.